Greetings, Epic Adventure Seekers. I'm Allie Beerman, your guide to Venus to find your world. And you're joining us here today for Let's Get Metaphysical, Connecting Heart and Mind. Today's guest has a very unique talent, changing family life and individuals dramatically. Definitely stay tuned to the end to discover what you never knew that you don't know about family dynamics. But first, I have a question for you. Have you ever felt like your life just happens to you? If that's you, I made a gift for you. Step in a new direction. It's a quick read that lets you begin to discover your power and control every day in your life. And the link to download your copy is in the show notes. And if you've not done so yet, I invite you to visit our special show page and listen or watch any episode. And if you could leave us a review, I much really appreciate that. In fact, if you tell two friends about the show, and maybe they'll tell two friends, that'll make a difference because we're all over the world. I don't know who's listening or who isn't. That's the thing about a podcast, which is why I created a special community. And when you join that community, you can join me live every month for a Zoom chat like this where everybody gets to participate. And that will also be in the show notes. Kelly Rowley has enjoyed, in her own words, a soul-nourishing career as a director of various youth programs across the country, a family coach for teens, for parents, for more than 20 years. She knows the challenges of new momness, I like that word, feeling scattered and healing from traumatic events so she can thrive in her own life. Now stop whatever you're doing, especially if you have a family, especially of multiple generations. Listen really carefully. You will be more than a little glad that you did, and your loved ones will benefit too. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our show, Kelly. I feel so grateful our paths crossed as a survivor of two traumatic brain injuries your program name totally caught my attention would you please share with our listeners what kind of brain is and how you created it yeah well thank you Ali for having me I am so loving that we met as well and I know that it's I mean, we know that it's always purposeful and it's always perfect, right? But I'm just really grateful that we've connected and had such lovely conversations. Um, so thanks again for having me. And I love talking about Kind Brain. Yes, um, I started Kind Brain almost, it's three and a half years, August, 2019. Um, I was introduced to NeuroOptimal um, Brain Training almost four years ago and um, did one session and was hooked, like literally like, oh, wow, this is, this is a big thing. Um, and like you said, I'd had like a 20 year career of working with families and I'd been in heart centered education um, for the majority of that time. And I thought I had enough tools and my meditation was good. And then this was like, oh, this actually like kind of changes the game for me. So I ended up purchasing um, my own NeuroOptimal system uh, a couple of months later and just basically offered it to all of my clients, all of my friends and my family and just said, guys, let's just, let's just try this and see where it goes. And people loved it. And next thing I know, everyone's referring and like within six months, which is unheard of within six months, like I had a wait list and mm -hmm. I'd gone from a stay at home mom to, and it was Zane coming, you know, going everywhere with me. And now he's going with me to like some clients and like, it just became like crazy. And, and literally like, it was like, wait list. It's time to buy a new machine. It just got really full because people were having so many results. And 
I saw like the gamut. I saw like people with strokes. I saw kids. I saw adults just wanting to like get, get better focus and balance sleep and people wanting to alleviate depression. Everyone was feeling the, you know, the results. So, um, so yeah, I've been doing that since August, 2019 and we've expanded into retreats. Um, I have more systems that I rent out to families. Um, I do online coaching and I have actually a spot in my home where people can come and do, you know, one day retreats with me and do a red light and infrared sauna and our optimal and, you know, a strategy session. So it's, yeah, it's growing. <laughs> I wish you lived here. It's like, since I left Idaho that had an incredible wellness community, hard to believe I'm in New York and they don't have the same wellness community. So I've been having all these health stuff because I have no access to everything you just described is in your spa. And I used them, you know, a few times a week when I lived in Idaho. I didn't have all these challenges. So, wow, everybody who lives by you is, well, there are no accidents, but they made good life choices. That's so amazing. I don't even know what neurooptimal whatever you called it is. Could you tell us about that? Yeah. So NeuroOptimal is a brain training system that was created over 20 years ago by two clinical psychologists. They were in the traditional neurofeedback world and they saw an opportunity to move people out of always having to go to talk therapy and get into using neurofeedback, but in a way that was not going to be fixing the person or fixing the problem because they come from the place that we have, we have the ability to heal ourselves, our brains and our bodies want to heal. And so they, I mean, it was, I want to say all throughout the nineties, you know, in early two thousands, they experimented and they figured out, they took all of the, what we would call direct neurofeedback, the ones that, you know, are quote unquote, fixing people. Um, and they took all of that and they said, okay, how can we make this to where it's not about fixing somebody? It's about just helping them regulate their own nervous system where your own brain and your own body are choosing how to do it. And so it is specific to you, but it's still the same program. So that's a very vague statement, but what it literally is, is it's when I ship people the whole system, they get a laptop, they get um, a little box. It's the size of an iPhone. And then they get five sensors and you put two sensors on your head and three on your ears and you listen to music for 30 minutes. And the sensors are literally just picking up your current brain frequency, sending it through the software and then shooting it back in a mathematical equation that the brain and the nervous system can read and understand. And it acts like a mirror. And that does, that happens 256 times a second during your 30 minute session. So it's immediate and no other neurofeedback has that kind of immediate feedback and no other neurofeedback allows the brain and the nervous system to dictate how it wants to create a new neural pathway, defrag some stress, you know, shift patterns, et cetera. So every time I do a system or a session on myself, my brain and body are knowing what to do. And it's just a training so that I can be resilient to the things that happen in life. So that's, that's neurooptimal. That's incredible. So when I had a brain injury in 1996, my neighbor did neurofeedback. So I went and I was using my brain to, it was like a Pac-Man game to move it around. And it's like, well, that didn't help anything. Oh no. Yeah, so what you just described, I had no idea something like that exists. So every center where they treat brain injuries, people need to, they need to have that equipment. They need to do it. And how, what is it that you did? I get the feeling that you put a personal touch into it. Yeah, so, I mean, you can just, straight rent the system and I teach you how to use it and you have my support for the month. And then if people want additional coaching for those that are like, it's, you know, it, it could really be just like somebody wanting to 
figure out their new transition in life? Are they going through a new career change? Are they wanting to create a business? Are they wanting to have healthy relationships? Are they going through a divorce? It's usually an impetus like that that makes people want to work with me um, personally. And so then there's weekly coaching that we can add to it. And I bring my heart-centered educational background. I bring um, my you know ministerial energy and my tools that I personally use and that have used you know for a long time time and create just a foundational like clearing of like let's go of let's let go of these judgments and limiting beliefs and then let's create an action plan so that you can start seeing the results of your own intuition working because everybody can reconnect to their intuition you don't have to like you know assume that it's just gone if you don't know how to work with it so we you know start building success with people listening to their intuition and guiding them through that. So that's how I work with people individually. And then the retreats, you know, I have the one day and the three day retreats. And so that's a little bit more involved as well. Yeah, I, I was going to ask about it later, but when I read about your retreat, usually the people I know who do retreats, they're twice the size of yours. And I've never read a description that sounded so intimate, like, that would be someplace that would really be nourishing. Yeah. So people fly in for that. People fly in to like do the one day retreats with me or the three day. And it is so nourishing. Both of them. Like, I think we've taken the word nourishing out of our vocabulary. It's like so many people don't think that they need to nourish their bodies and their brains. And it's like, no, we should be doing that as like a basic rule because then we're going to be able to like navigate life so much differently and not have to like put all this pressure on ourselves because we're coming from a place of real intimacy and real authenticity. And so, yeah, we, we max out at seven people for our three-day retreats. And I mean, we could probably go up to 10, you know, if we had a different location, but we like to keep it intimate so people can really, you know, start building community and have a lot of one-on-one time with me and Sophie, my co-facilitator, because that's, that's where like the real stuff happens. I don't want people to get lost in like a 30 person retreat and feel like they could hide because a lot of people like to hide. So let's, you know, let's get, you know, in the front row, in the circle, whatever it is, and let's do the work. That's so interesting. Whenever I go to any kind of class, I get there early, I get in the front row. So then, you know, I'm surprised when I get up and look behind me and the room is full. It's, yeah, people definitely like to hide. I think that's just like a normal response, right? Like if you think of how we've gone through traditional schooling, through traditional like learning, it's taken a lot of our like basic intuition, our basic like knowledge of our bodies and our basic knowledge of like what we like, it's kind of taken that away from us. And so then, you know, you get to be an adult, you know, you've become maybe a little bit jaded. You've got this job that maybe you don't like. You're really upset with yourself. Like who knows what's going on? And now you're in a room full of people and you don't want to share because you think everyone's going to judge you. I'm always, I don't always sit in the front row, but I'm always sharing. I actually like to sit like more in the back and like watch everybody, but I'm always sharing. So I'm that person that's, I'm going to raise my hand because I'm like, if I'm in the room, I'm learning. I'm going to get as much value as I can. So, um, yeah. So I think it's valuable to stand up and share and take up space, you know? Yeah. And it's, I was just in a course with, I don't know, maybe there are a hundred people, not all of them showed up in every class, but when the person who was, uh, I'm not thinking of the right word, but t- teaching the class, would ask for a volunteer to do a demonstration. It'd be the same people who raise their hands all the time. And I remember somebody wrote in the chat, why do you always choose the same people? Why don't you choose somebody who's an introvert with people thinking introvert means shy, which it doesn't. But I'm thinking that's their choice. <laughs> They're not raising their hand. And I'd go and, and I'd meet all these people and they'd say, wow, that's so neat. You speak up all the time. It's like, I wish I could do that. It's like, you can. You can. 
make. And you just simply quit. can. Yes. It's that easy. It's that simple. It may not be that easy because it's just a choice. And you and I talked about this, like everything's a choice. Everything's a choice to like, you know, move through trauma, through, you know, anything to be resilient. It's a choice. And even if it's difficult in those moments, like you can still commit to the choice and like get on the other side of it. So you can raise your hand and you can ask a question and maybe you can feel a little bit silly and stupid and like, okay, like, are you going to die? No, you're not. You're just going to feel a little bit awkward and then you're going to get through it. And then you're going to feel comfortable again, because I guarantee you, and I don't know if this happens to you, but when I raise my hand, people come up to me after like whatever that module was, whatever that session was, people come up to me and are always saying, thank you so much for sharing that. That really inspired me or something, or I had that question too. So you'll get that feedback only if you're showing up. Yeah. It's, I remember I went to, I don't want to name the organization and I don't know why I was checking it out, but it's a well, I think it still exists nationally. Anyway, so I was in there and someone got up and gave his speech. That's what he did there. And afterwards, everybody was congratulating him and telling him, what a great job you did. You're so shy. And you did, and they kept telling him, you're so shy. And you did it. And it's like, well, how's he supposed to stop being shy if everybody's telling him how shy he is? Words matter. I agree. Words matter. Yes. Yeah, I went, um, when I was little, I was, I, well, family circumstances. So I was kind of shy and quiet. And my mom would introduce me as, well, she's shy. So I grew up thinking I had to be shy, not in school. In school, I was out there. I was loud. Everybody knew I was there. But at home, it was, I was really quiet and shy. And then I realized at some point, I have a lot to say, and I'm going to say it. And then I think I probably started talking too much because I love to learn. And every time I learn something, I want to tell everybody what I learned about. Yeah. So that mm, I'm not giving other people a chance to talk. So I started listening a whole lot more. And I, I remember I studied with Bob Proctor way before The Secret, and he taught me so many valuable things like, you know, if you're listening and you hear something that's inaccurate, just let it go. You don't need to go correct people. So I found that a little tough to deal with, but I, I let it go because people don't want to feel like you're correcting them. And yeah. yeah. And, and just because you think you're right, well, so what? <laughs> If it's well, and you may be right, but then like, also, could there just be a dialogue about it? Could there be a question about it? Could there be like a discussion? You know, I think, I think that's where we kind of get caught up in the society right now. It's like, no, you're wrong. And therefore you need to be canceled or told how wrong you are versus, well, why don't we just have a discussion about it? And let's see what we can learn from each other. Because I've unlearned a lot in the last few years, a lot. And when people plant seeds for me, I see it and I'm like, okay, I'm going to just, I'm going to check it out. And my spiritual teacher always said, just check it out. And if it doesn't work for you, leave it. Just like you're saying, Bob said, it's like, just leave it. And it's okay. Yeah. I, I, tell, I love to teach live classes are my favorite thing because I do it experiential. So people get to experience the invisible forces that are driving us. And I always tell them to take it in and let the seeds go in. And if and when the time is right, they'll sprout. And it might be 20 years later and it might never happen, but pretty much what you just said. Yeah, no, I agree. So how did you get to be such an, I don't know if independence is the right word, but you're confident. How'd you get to be so confident? <laughs> Um, I think I kind of always have been, um, I'm the oldest of four 
And I was born in 1975. So like I was a 70s and 80s kid and my parents gave me a lot of um, just a lot of space. And so I was off and I was, you know, just willing to like go on adventures. And I think, and my parents made me like make the phone call. Like I'm, I remember being like eight or nine or 10 and, you know, I wanted something. They're like, okay, here's the phone and here's the phone number. And so like, I had to get into that space of like, okay, I'm going to do it. And if I wanted something. And so then it just became this like, oh, well, if I want something, I'm just going to figure it out. And I don't know. I feel like I've, I feel like I've been kind of blessed with confidence and, and I'm okay with people not liking me. And I've kind of always been that way. And I think that's kind of a key, like some people are not going to like what I do or have to say, and I'm okay with that. There are moments when I'm not, to be quite honest, like there are really like heartbreaking times when I'm like, oh, I've lost some friends. Um, but mostly it's like, uh, it's okay because that's, we're just not for each other right now. So, um, yeah, I've, I've done so much growing in the last 20 years that I really don't even recognize myself as like a younger person, but I like myself and I think I'm a pretty decent person. <laughs> and I know that like, I'm loving and I, I want to like be loving to people. And I, I'm also very aware that as a woman and just to be honest, as an attractive woman, like other women may not like that. So I feel like in my adult years, I go out of my way to be extra gracious and like extra inviting because I know when I'm coming up to like, you know, someone that I think is attractive, man or woman, it's like, oh, it can be a little intimidating. So I just want to like extend just as much loving as I can. So that's, that may sound full of myself, but that's just how I operate and that works. I have a very beautiful daughter it's like we go well she's in her late 40s now but when she was young and she's also an actress and we go out like to a restaurant and sit down and like all the heads would turn and there'd be like half a dozen guys coming over do you need more water do you need this do you need that <laughs> it's not nobody's ever not gonna like that it's just you're not gonna not like it and so like good for her you know yeah. yeah, she t- she was on um, a set for a Disney movie, and she said, "I'm thirsty." And she said, "It doesn't nice came to her with a glass of water." Good for her! Like, great, you know, like that's just fun. And like, I think I think as a woman, it's nice to just kind of like feel appreciated like that, you know. So good for yeah. her. Yeah. Yes, yeah, and. Uh, yeah, just to have that kind of confidence. <laughs> and it's when I was growing up because of our circumstances, I never had anybody to ask for help with anything. And the one time I asked my brother for help, actually twice, he just said no. So I had to figure everything out for myself. And what I didn't realize until recently, and I'm in my 70s now, I don't know that it's okay to ask. So I'd be sitting in a class and a slide would go by and I'd be thinking, man, I'd like to see that again. But somebody else would say, would you please put it back up? It's like, why didn't I do that? Yeah. Like, why aren't we asking for what we need? You know? Yeah. I mean, I definitely saw moments of that. It's not like, it's not like I am perfect with it, but yeah. It's like, why aren't you asking for what you need? If you want to see it again, that's yeah. I think we get tripped up with that. Well, I remember when I was little, uh, my mom once said to me, don't ask me for anything because I couldn't handle it. And and she gave me the reason why. So I grew up that way. And I remember uh, computers in the home were new when, what was it, the 70s or the 80s? I don't remember. <laughs> and I was sitting there working on something and I was stuck. And my daughter came in. And she said, Mom, if you can't figure it out, why don't you call dad? Because computers was his line of work. Not to ask for help 
that's just what you're going to hear. Like that's the ingraining. So like you have to unlearn all of that, right? You have to unlearn how to ask for help because it's just, you just didn't do it. And of course you didn't do it because your parent told you not to. And like when our parents tell us these things, that's what sticks, you know, even if you don't want it to stick, you just, it just sticks. So like we have to like do this unlearning and that's where neurooptimal comes in. And even like the work that I do, because it's about forgiving the judgment, right? And it's like letting that energy move through us so that it doesn't have to stay in our body and we can unlearn the things that are not serving us. I love that word unlearning. I've been seeing it a lot lately and that's, I never thought about that because I just go energetically and clear stuff out. Well, I tell the people, this is what it is so they can search for what was the actual event that happened and we clear it out. But I think unlearning is a little bit different from, I think it's a lot different from what I do. I'm just really fascinated. I wouldn't really understand how your system works. And I'm just thinking every brain rehab place in the country should have and should know what you I do. agree with you. I agree with you. And if you want to help me do that sales call, I'm more than willing. No, I like, I know. And it doesn't have to be somebody that has a traumatic brain injury. It can literally be, you know, the average person because we, you know, to piggyback on what we're talking about with the unlearning, it's like, we come as adults with all of this stuff, all of these beliefs, all of the stuff that our parents tell us. I'm trying to be mindful of the things, the things that I say to my child, but I mean, you know, that's not guaranteed that I do it perfectly. And, and so, yeah, when I really started doing these sessions, it just was like, what is real for me? Like, what is true, you know? And and does it matter if I have, like, I'm just going to give a perfect example right now. I have nothing against this group. I'm actually totally fine with this group. I'm not in this group, but this is the example that I give the flat earth group. I don't care if you think the earth is flat or not. I don't care if you have all the science. That's fantastic. I'm not judging it, but what does it affect in my, how does it affect my life? Whether the earth is flat or round. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's like, we could go down these paths of like, you know, the new beliefs, the new whatever. And then I have to ask myself, does that actually affect my everyday life? And if it doesn't, then I'm going to let it hang out over here and not affect me at all. We can all be friends. We can all hang out. I don't care about it, but it's not going to affect my life. And, and then, but that's even different because 10 years ago, I would have been like, no way. Like, I, like I can't exist in that space. Like it doesn't make sense. You know, do you see what I'm saying? Like I'm taking what works for me and letting everything else go. I hope I didn't offend anybody in the flat earth community because I really am not judging. <laughs> I think I could talk with you for hours because you know so much stuff that I don't have a clue about. I would say the same about you. You have a whole other world that I don't know about. So we could talk for hours. Well, I'll have to have you back because I do a show that I call show where it's totally just fun. But I think we're having fun anyway. Oh. We could do that again and some other stuff. Wow. So I was wondering, you said so many really, really wise things. You have so much life experience. You seem so young to have that much life experience. I wondered if you have one message, and I know you said a lot of stuff. Is there one thing that you especially want our listeners to take home with them? Oh, I think, and I'm going to be very honest that I'm really now, what I'm about to say, I'm really now getting it for myself in the last couple of years. Um, everything is about loving and it's about the deep loving. It's about the accepting loving. It's about seeing people different than me and truly seeing, like having so much compassion for their upset, their projections, their whatever, and just loving because that's kind of all that there is. Like at the end of the day, 
if I was, if I was loving, if I could show loving to my kid or, you know, whatever, like that's going to impact me a lot deeper than, than having success. And yes, I want success and I'm working towards all of that, but like I can, I can still just be in my loving with it all. And I think most people are scared to love. And I know that I'm speaking from experience on that. I was married for 16 years and we loved each other so much, but I'm really just now after he's gone, after he's dead to really understand what that means. And I think the more loving we can bring to our world, to myself, to ourselves, to our family, like that, that changes everything. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Love is the highest vibration and then joy. And you have to come from your heart, from both of them. It's coming from up here in your brain. It doesn't work. It doesn't connect to the, uh, to the infinite. It, the infinite can't respond to what's coming out of here. So it's, that, that's a great message. And I'm finding myself on the same journey because I thought I loved myself forever. And I realized if I love myself, certain experiences couldn't show up in my life. And everything happens for a reason. And if certain experiences keep showing up, I ask the universe, what am I not seeing that you keep bringing it to me? What are you showing me? What can I learn from here? And I think when you get into the loving, and this is what I do with my clients, it's like everything we create, promote, and allow every single thing, every single thing. And so what can I learn in this moment? It may be really, really hard right now, but what can I learn? And I'm absolutely not going to be blaming anybody else because it's, I'm creating, promoting and allowing it. So like, what did I do and how can I fix it? And, you know, I mean, you know, it's, it's not easy to be in that space all the time, but it's the truth, you know, and there's freedom in it. Absolutely. It's the only thing that makes sense. And I just think you're completely remarkable because here I am in my seventies and I've finally learned what you already know. You are just such a powerful, loving presence in the world. And I found a few years ago, whenever I worked on somebody, because before COVID, I worked on them in person and I would just have tears running down my face because so much of love and I could feel it was pouring through me and into the person. And it's, I'll get teary very easily because I feel very connected, especially when I'm working with somebody. Yeah, yeah, same. I agree. I hear you. And I'm sure that your clients got so much value from those experiences, you know? And I think the more that we can show people that that's a possibility, I think we're doing the job. Like this is the work, you know? Yeah. So can you do your work long distance? Because if you're connecting things to read brain waves. No, we can do the coaching long distance, but you have to be in front of the NeuroOptimal, which is why I rent them out or I sell them. So if you're in LA, obviously you can come see me in person, but I can also ship you a system and, um, and people buy them. People buy them all the time. So you have to have it in front of you. And I, you know, my goal is to just have a neurooptimal session uh, system in everybody's home and office. It's like, let's just relax our nervous systems in a really organic way without adding other things to it so that people stop projecting onto other people. <laughs> and I say that with love because I have been there. I am not saying anything that I have not done myself. And so I, can I just tell one quick little story? Sure. <laughs> So I was, I was at a, a mastermind event with my business coach last week. And I was talking with two women um, that were kind of newish friends and they're one's a therapist and they're talking about, um, they did this exercise in a workshop that was an alter ego and like a different, per a different side of their personality came out and they, they don't operate in this place normally. And then someone else was like, Oh, I think I would be like this if I did that. And because they don't, operate in either one of those places in the alter ego. Right. And I literally was thinking, 
And like, I have had so many, like, I'm just going to say incarnations in this lifetime. Like I've had so many experiences. I was a mean girl in high school. I was like a full on, like that girl in high school. Then I was a hardcore, like judgy kind of like liberal. And then it's like, now I'm like more freedom and like, where are people at? It's all fine. It's all good. And I've gone through such a journey to like experience all of those different pieces of myself that I'm like, I don't know what I would pull out at this point. <laughs> like, I don't know what I haven't done that would be edgy and like interesting for me to learn from. So I just thought that was funny. So that's why I say like, I've done the things I've said it probably I've been in it. Oh, we are experiencing technical difficulties. I want to remind you to enjoy every moment. That's capital I N, capital J O Y, every moment, because nothing happens out there. It all happens within you. And I look forward to seeing you here next time.